Good morning, folks. We have a lot to cover quickly here today. Planets in the galaxy, solar forcing of the terrestrial environment, radiation dose on planes, the Enceladus plume, and radiation rates here on Earth. But we are starting with our star, and we find the last 24 hours may not have had any major flares or Earth-directed CMEs, but there was plenty of coronal instability. While we wait for the coronal hole solar wind stream, we're seeing the sunspot situation surge upward a bit, including the incoming spots and a new baby group on the north. The incoming solar wind should be minor to moderate, so the top watch is for those sunspots and the plasma filaments in the corona. The sun is at sunspot maximum phase. Let's go out to the galaxy where the most abundant type of star is the M dwarf. We know there are likely to be many Earth-like planets around Sun-like stars, but what about the most common stars and their planets? A new study claims that up to a third of all of those systems could be habitable and contain liquid water. The Goldilocks zone is relatively broader around M dwarfs, and this has big implications for habitability. We're coming back to Earth next where it's not only shown that the sun drives long-term changes in sea level and ocean temperatures, but it follows major solar cycles that we already know about, with a profound impact from the grand solar minimum events. This ends the argument in that subfield of planetary climate science. Yesterday, we discussed how airplane electronics are already at risk from space weather. Today, we're looking at how the craft is able to shield passengers. FYI, for those of you flying, while the average protection from the plane is 12 to 16 percent, this can be up to 32 percent near the middle of the passenger section. Figured that's worth knowing for many of you. We're coming next back to the newest Enceladus plume. Turns out it's not just the biggest they've ever seen, but the rate of water ejection from the Saturnian moon is outrageous. The newest data pushes further the idea that this is indeed a record plume event, possibly related to the larger solar system shift traceable across all the planets in the system. Lastly here, a good article about cosmic radiation doses at Antarctic stations. Key findings are that spending a year at one of them would already subject you to more radiation than the maximum allowable dose, and that the magnetic field of Earth fundamentally blocks out these particles, which is simply yet another confirmation of how space energy will continue to increase on Earth as our magnetic field keeps weakening in the ongoing magnetic pole shift. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.